so today we are starting up a new section. Our new section today is Buddhism. So this is another one of our five major religions. Going to write down Buddhism and underlined. As I said, this is one of our five major religions of the world. So we covered Hinduism. Uh, Buddhism is the next one we're covering. And then we'll cover Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Now that you have Buddhism written down and underlined, you'll see right here it has the symbol for Buddhism. So for that symbol of Buddhism, you can see that there's kind of looks like an eight-spoke wheel is what it looks like. So how do you make an eight-spoke wheel? All right. So to make an eight-spoke wheel, first thing we're going to do, we're going to make a plus symbol. And then after we make a plus symbol, we're going to make then an X. So now we have our eight spokes there. Can you see how we have eight spokes there? Then we have to make a circle. So we need an interior circle. And then we need an exterior circle. There you go. There, there's our symbol for Buddhism. All right. Let's talk about what is Buddhism. Go ahead and make a new bullet and write down what is Buddhism. So bullet, what is Buddhism? So what is Buddhism? Well, Buddhism is a major religion in the world, although it's more of a philosophy than a religion because there is no god or goddesses in buddhism it's the fourth largest religion in the world go ahead and make a one and write down fourth largest religion in the world so one fourth largest religion in the world so the fourth largest religion in the world it has about 300 million people that live by the philosophy of Buddhism. So fourth largest religion in the world and 300 million followers. I'll just make one right down fourth largest religion in the world. You can see right there in the background, we have a statue of Buddha. Okay. So what is Buddhism? What, what exactly does it do? What's like a central concept of it? Well, a central concept of Buddhism is that it explains the purpose of life. Go ahead and make it two and write down explains the purpose of life. So Buddhism explains the purpose of life. It also talks about the injustices and inequality that are kind of around the world. And it basically, its goal is to help people by providing a way of life that leads to true happiness. Okay? So that's kind of the purpose of Buddhism, to kind of explain the purpose of life and then kind of give you a way of living a life that leads to true happiness. So what's some history of Buddhism? Well, it was started by Buddha, also known as Siddhartha. Uh, he was a prince in India uh, about 2,500 years ago. And he wasn't very happy in his real life. You know, he was living like a palace and so forth, you know, living a rich life. And he was like, man, this is very unsatisfactory. And he eventually ends up leaving his home. Uh, after he ends up leaving his home, he goes on this six-year journey, just kind of exploring the India and such. And as long as his journey, he eventually starts to meditate. And when he meditates... He finds enlightenment. And when he finds enlightenment, he finds a path for people to be able to live a happy life. Go ahead and make a three. And we're going to write down started by Buddha 2,500 years ago. So three, started by Buddha 2,500 years ago. So started by Buddha 2,500 years ago. All right, what did Buddha teach? Well, Buddha taught the four noble truths, which basically sum up the religion, right? So he teaches something called the four noble truths, which kind of sums up the Buddhism religion. 
He also calls something called the Noble Eightfold Path. That's why we made the symbol for Buddhism. We made the eight-spoke wheel. So the Noble Eightfold Path, that is represented in the symbol of Buddhism that we made. And he taught to lead a moral life, you need to be mindful and aware of thoughts and actions and to develop wisdom and understanding. And he also taught something called the five precepts. So we talked about, and so we have Buddhism here, uh, which is the founder of Buddhism is Buddha, Siddhartha. Uh, we talked about Hinduism. Now the founder of Hinduism is no one. We talked about Christ well, we haven't talked about yet. We haven't talked about Judaism yet, but the founder for Judaism is going to be someone named Abraham. The founder for Christianity is going to be Jesus. And then our founder for Islam is going to be Muhammad. And we'll talk about each one of those one by one. But those kind of just a sum up of our founders of the big five religions. All right, let's talk about the four noble truths. I'm going to make a bullet and write down four noble truths. All right, so there's four noble truths. The very first noble truth, so we're going to make a one, and we're going to write down life is suffering. So number one, life is suffering. So this is the first noble truth that Buddha teaches. Now, that might seem like a real downer for a beginning of your philosophy, but his reasoning for why life is suffering is you can't live life without knowing someone else that had died, without going through things that are going to frustrate you, etc. So no matter what in life, you're always going to experience some type of hardship in some way or another. So that's the first of the four number twos. What's the second one say? Well, the second one says that the reason why you suffer is it's caused by cravings and aversions. Go ahead and make a two. Suffering is caused by cravings and aversions. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that according to Buddha, the reason why people are unhappy is that if you get what you want, it doesn't actually make you happy. It kind of deprives you of it. Um, basically, your unhappiness is caused by you craving things and you trying to avoid things. Okay, so that's what that's what he kind of says there for a second one. Okay, so you wanting to get something and then you getting that thing doesn't really make you happy. It kind of deprives you of happiness because that craving in the first place is making you unhappy. And that going out of your way to avoid things to make you unhappy. So the, it's kind of the going out of your way to do things. That's what's making you unhappy, according to Buddha. All right, so that's number two. What's the third noble truth? Well, the third noble truth says that, all right, even though life is suffering, uh, true happiness can be obtained. Go ahead and make a three and write down, suffering can be overcome and true happiness obtained. Okay, so even though there is suffering... All right, so even though, you know, there is suffering, you can still attain true happiness. How can you obtain true happiness? Well, according to Buddha, if you stop craving useless things that you don't really need and you live just each life, live each day, one day at a time, and you're not living for the future, you'll be happy and free. So basically, taking each day, one day at a time, according to Buddha, that will make you more happy. And the fourth noble truth says, number four, the noble eightfold path leads to the end of all suffering. Uh, so basically, number four says, see the eightfold noble path for more information. All right, so his first of the four noble truths is life is suffering. His second of the four noble truths is suffering is caused by wanting things, cravings. His third noble truth is those suffering that suffering can be overtained and happiness and true happiness obtained if you live for just you know one day at a time and then the fourth number two says see the noble eight full pass for more information okay uh, let's go ahead and stop there for today and then next time we'll talk about the noble eight full path and the five precepts